Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming, and uh, thanks for staying awake after that wonderful lunch. Uh, I'm going to try not to talk like Ben Stein. This is a PCAP. Well, I'm on. It says I'm on. Do I need to speak louder? Okay, now. There we go. All right, let me start over. Thanks for coming, and uh, thanks for being here after lunch. That was a wonderful uh, barbecue lunch, right? And now everybody's going to do NAPCON right now. So especially if I start talking like Ben Stein, you know, this is a PCAP, and it's really comfortable, and it's really, no, I'm not going to put you all to sleep. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is tuning ICS security alerts, an alarm management approach. Um, my name is Chris Sistron, technical manager with ICS team at Mandiant, and I've been here almost uh, nine years, so, and now Mandiant was uh, bought uh, recently by Google, so I'm going to be getting one of these hats pretty soon, I think. I'm going to try to put the propeller on my hard hat. Um, uh, before, before Mandy and I worked for a power company in the south uh, called Entergy, uh, worked there uh, as, a, as a power engineer, skate engineer uh, for almost 12 years. I, I founded and ran B-Size Jackson in Mississippi for about six years, co-founded the Beer ISAC, which is uh, the best ISAC, and we're going to have Beer ISAC later, you know, after the conference everybody goes and does that, you know, get together. Um, and the founder of NAPCON, and Dad Jokes as a Service. Uh, quick, quick uh, I love the, the Dad Jokes earlier. Uh, um, I'll tell one Dad Joke, and then we'll go. Uh, keep going. Uh, well, how did the criminal, cyber criminal, escape the police? He ran somewhere. <laughs> All right. So, so with this, uh, you know, you know, got some Mandian alumni in the front row over here and over here. We got some Mandian alumni. Uh, what's going to happen is, is like we became fire eye, and then nope, it's always been Mandian. You know? So, all right. So about the talk, uh, threats and risks aren't going away, so they're going to guide and direct our detection and response goals. You all know this. How many of you here have control systems at your company or in your day job? A few hands. Okay, um, you probably have them anyway. Just to keep this in mind, if you have any building automation, HVAC, like data center, um, AC, you know, for your data center, we found those on the internet, you know. Um, you have control systems all around you, so this is something that to keep that in mind. Or if you have customers or clients that have control systems, this is going to help you uh, because this is still an emerging field, even though I talked about network security monitoring back in Security Onion uh, uh, Conference back in 2015. Um, it's still relatively new. Uh, there's a lot of uh, control systems out there that aren't monitored. And so this is kind of a talk for those who are more advanced, who have some monitoring capabilities, maybe bought one of the newer control system security, network security monitoring products and put it in and now what do I do with it? So the whole deal is, is we need to have a way to engineer the system and have a philosophy around how we tune the security alerts that's coming in. And so I like to call this security alert engineering. Um, or as Chris uh, and uh, folks here call it uh, detection engineering, right? Um, Josh, yeah. And uh, we, we want to call, this is very similar to how control system alarms are tuned. And we're going to talk about two standards that exist out there. This may not make any sense to you, but this is we're not reinventing the wheel here. Tuning is not new by any means. Uh, and if you talk to a control systems engineer, they'll go, oh, yeah, I know what tuning is. We have to do that whenever we commission a new control system. 
And then we'll tie that back to like the NIST standards and Security Onion best practices of tuning your system. And then lastly, we'll talk about response and a little bit about playbooks and such. So uh, there's some really great content around control system security engineering. It's an emerging field even for our group. So there's some uh, OT security blueprints from Sarah Flukes uh, from Germany. And a couple years ago at S4, it's one of the probably the, the control system security conference to, to go to. Uh, there is this birth of secure coding practices for PLCs. Most of the time, they don't have any security. Or if they do, it's not enabled by default. So there's a lot of cool things that that whole team has uh, come up with. Jake Brodsky, Sarah, Vivek, Dale Peterson, and more. Um, and then recently, uh, also born out of S4, was this um, idea of incident command system, ICS, which is like NEMA, if you have any NEMA uh, or incident command folks. Um, we're following that same process, but for doing incident response and control system environments called ICS for ICS. So that's a little plug about the stuff that we're working on in control system security. Basically, the crux is know your systems. And uh, you all know this. If you don't know your system, you can't defend it. How does my system work? What are my threats and risks? Do I have enough visibility? Do I practice my plans? And we've had a lot of great talks today about all of these things, especially at visibility and how, how things work. How, how could it be used against us? How do we find evil? So here's the problem statement. There's little published about control system security alert management. Asset owners have to learn things by doing it the hard way, and there's really no guide about it. Um, even still, even the manuals for these network security monitoring sensors don't have a whole lot uh, uh, in their manuals about how to tune the system. So the theory is ICS alarm management, like for like a Siemens system or an Emerson or a GE or whoever, those systems have very well-defined uh, tuning standards. And there's even standards from the uh, International Society of Automation. That's well-defined, and it's been talked about a long time. IT security alert management is pretty well-defined. I mean, I remember back in 2015, there was uh, that talk that talked about collating uh, alerts where you don't get the same alert 50 times. You just get one alert, and then you can just open it up and see the 50 instances of that alert. That's been well-defined. Now we have to say, I see as a security alert management must be engineered. Just like we engineer the control system, we need to engineer the detection system. So the solution is to create a reference that combines both concepts to empower uh, our security teams and asset owners. So I like to talk about history. You could probably get me talking about, you know, old, you know, glass insulators or old power lines, you know, the way things that were done, serial ports and modems, um, uh, old laptops, dial-up, you know, all that stuff. Um, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, ICS network security monitoring is kind of the new hotness, um, like Tesla is that everybody's got, oh, we got to get a, a electric vehicle. Um, that's going to be great. I saw the plug-ins in the, the garage across the street. This is really great, um, but it's not new. Um, here's a page, there's a whole 50 page section of the in, uh, standard handbook for electrical engineers. And that's the fifth edition from 1922. That's a tweet from way long time ago. They have a whole section on electric vehicles. And then they have a whole nother section on electric uh, streetcars and electric trains and locomotives. Um, and there's a picture of one. If you go in like Jay Leno's garage, he's got an electric vehicle. You know, that was from like 1915 or something like that. So what was old is new again. See where I'm going with this. Engineers already know about how to do monitoring. And I say control system engineers, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and all these. Uh, this is something that's not new. We've been monitoring processes 
to, to get an idea of how it, the system works and how to improve it and what the root cause is if something goes wrong. So on the left there is a what we call a wigwag chart. That's the nickname. It's a recording uh, meter and it has a little pin and it records something like um, volts or megawatts or something at a power substation over time. But it can monitor temperature, pressure, anything like that. The one on the right is down into the uh, a phase power for inside of a relay when there's a fault on, on a transmission line. Uh, you can actually see when the voltage collapses and then when the current increases for just a few cycles there and you can see the, the phaser diagram of what's going on. So we've been doing this kind of root cause analysis for quite a while. Here's the timeline. Go back all the way to 1839, Charles Babbage invented that chart recorder we talked about and doing monitoring on train railways. I, uh, they, they had it on the back of a rail uh, behind a locomotive. Um, we fast forward to what I like to talk about, power grid. Uh, that's my background, of course. Three phase AC was in, con, uh, conceived around 1880s. In 1888, the Bristol chart recorder was invented just for the power system. That's the picture of the patent there on the left. Um, first SCADA systems were two wire uh, telephone based and they had uh, contacts to see when something was open or closed and then they could send a telephone relay to open or close. Think of like closing a breaker, opening a breaker, or like even on railroads they would uh, do a switch, uh, change the switch on a track. And that's a picture of one of those ones, what it looks like. If you fast forward to uh, the 60s, we have a lot more computers being there. We have digital SCADA coming online, and then we have the Northeast blackout. Boom, something bad happens. Okay, that really causes a revolution when something bad happens. Safety rules are written in blood. So now we have to go write some safety rules. We have to invent some new technology to prevent the Northeast blackout from happening again. So we come up with new uh, fault recorders, new digital relays, we have ethernet uh, based SCADA, phaser measurement units, things like that. And then I have in the bottom right, we have network security monitoring. It came around in 1988, you know, the cuckoo's egg, all that stuff we all know and love, uh, you know. So then we have the blackout happen again in 2003. And we go, well, we didn't have enough forensics data. Those wigwag charts that show um, amps was not, you know, detailed enough. We needed more information. We couldn't see down to the milliseconds on the forensics to put together what happened. They did put together what happened, but one that after action was we need to do more. And so we go back to this, and you can see down to the individual cycles of the sine wave that's on your power lines. Um, and then now we fast forward. Uh, we're, we have the Ukraine grid attacks in 2015 and 2016 and, and then the Ukraine-Russia uh, war against Ukraine now. Uh, we see that and this kind of just gives you an idea. This is just engineering for power systems. This is just an idea of the power grid monitoring since then. So what I try to do is if I meet someone who doesn't know about security monitoring, I go, yeah, you do. You just call it something else. You're doing power grid monitoring or you're doing control system monitoring. So the, we're going to see where I'm going with this. We're going to take two concepts and they're basically the same thing. So uh, little Bobby, I don't know if you've seen Rob Lee's uh, comic strip. Uh, let's get some network visibility and more secure, reliable, safe environment. What are your goals? Great, and you might want to think about uh, the in-state deliverables with the scenarios that impact those goals and think about the in-state and work backwards. Make sure your response scenarios are supported by your detection and collection strategies. So uh, that's a really great uh, little comic strip um, around network security monitoring and uh, control systems, so it's really great. So let's take this standard, um, ISA, the International Society of Automation, has 18.2 2016. This is really nerdy, 
and I will read just this uh, first paragraph. The primary function within the alarm system is to notify operators of abnormal process conditions or equipment malfunctions and support the response. Does that sound like what we do? I mean, it's just pretty much the same thing. So let's read NIST. Intrusion detection is a process of monitoring the events, blah, 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 of uh, imminent threats and violation of computer security policies acceptable use policy standard and basically in su supporting what the response so we take this diagram um, of a control system and it shows uh, from this standard this ISA standard shows where you collect data from and where the alarms are going and you take um, these different sensors on the far the far left you have like a pipe there it's got sensors it's like temperature pressure monitoring there's a control valve that has the safety system that's the SIS or the basic uh, uh, process control system that's the PLCs and you have your HMIs that you touch and can turn on and off things and all these things are collecting to a, an alarm system well let's drop security on top of that we can collect the alarm logs and the security logs like the newer PLCs have syslog in them and like I talked about in 2015 uh, we can collect all those logs and even collect them from a network security monitoring system on a sensor on the network and send them to your uh, security system, your SIM or your SOC or whatever. It could be Security Onion. Basically, it's taking the best of both worlds of operations. We're monitoring the process. We're trying to make sure that we're still making power. We're still... Uh, making oil and gas uh, into end products uh, that we can use every day, uh, or maybe chocolate bars, it could be anything, right? And then you have security, monitoring the network for malicious activity, for all these other things like regulatory safety things. Basically it boils down to, with visibility, like I talked earlier, you can't see where you aren't looking, and neither, you, you can't do forensics either. One thing that I run into is uh, engineers in the control system environment don't really know the term DFIR or forensics. They call it a different term. They call it root cause analysis. So sometimes this is, boils down to a conversation you need to have around uh, terms. So root cause analysis, they understand that, is the same in our world uh, as digital forensics. Uh, there are engineering forensics, like after the uh, Super Bowl blackout and, uh, you know, after, after in the Superdome, they had a forensics engineer come in to determine what happened, and they caused a root co uh, determine the root cause. I got a phone call because I worked at that power company, and they said, is it cyber? And I go, I don't know yet. I just saw it, and uh, let me go log in. <laughs> uh, it wasn't cyber, thankfully. Uh, that Actually, that substation had 1200 baud SCADA modem, so I don't think a hacker is gonna go waste his time trying to fool with that. Uh, fortunately, it was not related to, uh, uh, it was a uh, defect in the relay that was there protecting it. It wasn't anything related to cybersecurity at all. So I love this, uh, uh, Josh uh, and Chris, talking about detection engineering is a process of researching threats and then building and tuning the tools that find them. I love that, I love it, love it. I freaking love it, you know. Because <laughs> uh, it's talking my language. It's talking about when we don't willy-nilly just go buy this and throw it in there and, and then, yep, yep, we check that box. Nope, uh, we want to get rid of these nuisance things. We want to custom craft, custom build uh, in this detection system around the thing that we've already custom built, which is the control system. So this alert philosophy in the ISA 18.2 standard, basically it starts with having the basic definitions that extends to operational definitions. And then you have the performance and metrics around that based on the objectives and principles for the alarm systems. This is very what we do in cybersecurity with a mature SOC uh, operation. You're going to have the same type of philosophy around it. So what I would say is let's have an ICS or control system security alert philosophy 
around defining the security operations, defining the alert categories and priorities, defining the metrics around them, and then align them with your existing philosophies that are maybe with your IT alerts, security alerts, or your ICS control system alarms. So it would be cool to have like your playbooks that have not, you know, uh, the, the university folks say, what do we do? I would just Google it. No, we want to have a known custom response for this event, just like there is for if a, a temperature alarm goes off on a critical pipeline. You know, you don't want to have to go, I got to go read the manual. No, we want to have it custom engineered the entire way. There's a, a, a free checklist uh, in addition to the ISA standards. There's this one called EEMUA, based in the UK, Engineering Equipment and Materials Users Association. They have a standard called Engineering uh, EEMUA 191. Basically, it talks about how to do a checklist and uh, for your philosophy, creating these alerts. So we can use this to create ICS tuning alert philosophies. So we just re replace the alarm word with alert, and then it's like define any technical terms used in, instead of eclipsing, suppression, we just change, change it to IOC, network attack, sandworm, you know, whatever custom alert you're writing it for. Change it, from the, you know, lay out the methodology for managing the alert systems, including the management of change, setting in the alert priorities or incident priorities, the guidance on the selection of the rules, and things like that. So basically we're taking something that's old and making it the new hotness. We're doing the same thing that we've done before a trillion times. We just forget in human history that we've already invented it. Same thing, has this whole philosophy around security uh, alert management, this audit philosophy loop that's in uh, ISA standard 18.2, talks about how to have a mature alarm philosophy. Now let's just change some of the things from operation maintenance and monitoring assessment to security ops tuning and hunting. It, it just falls right into place. I love it. So going back to the old Mandiant uh, presentation I gave uh, back in 2015, how do we do NSM for control systems? There's a little example of control system, you know, grabbing the firewall logs or NetFlow or full PCAP, PCAP or didn't happen. Um, and then detection, looking at your security uh, onion alerts or your firewall alerts or high CPU usage or whatever, um, we want to consider where we detect and then apply it and tune it. So this is some diagrams from alarm uh, management. Uh, there's a blog post. Uh, after this, I'm gonna post these so you can get to the links. But it tells you what happens if you have not tuned your system. So basically, uh, the nuisance alarms become standing alarms. The standing alarms become performance target missed alarms then you're getting into like wear and tear of machinery, you're getting equipment damage, uh, and if you are basically upset so much where you're overwhelmed with so many alarms you don't know what to do with, you're, get, you're missing critical alarms, you're gonna have injuries and possibly deaths, emergency shutdown or environmental violations. If you can't manage your security uh, alerts the same way you manage uh, control system engineers manage the alarm system. So you see we can use the same philosophy as well. In the AAMUA uh, blog they have uh, this level average number of alarms per operator per hour and then maximum number of alarms per operator per hour and there's a a specific level, just between level four and level five, is the, their target. What's a, uh, and, and we have this for socks, right? We have how many uh, uh, alarms or alerts can, can, or incidents can a sock analyst handle? How many can the whole sock handle? It's the same thing with control systems. 
We don't want to overload our people. And if you only have one person and you have 6,000 alerts per hour, then that's, that's untenable. So how do we reduce nuisance alarms and reduce nuisance control system security alerts. Just the way, same way we try to reduce them with like security onion tuning, right? So here's an example before from this blog post from chemicalprocessing.com um, that had a uh, reduction of nuisance alarms. They have the process alarms, which is up in red, and the uh, operator's actions, which is blue below. Once they reduce the uh, nuisance alerts, uh, you can see that the, the signal to noise ratio is changed significantly and the operator can see when they need to act upon which alarms that are happening. Same way if you have too many uh, cybersecurity alarms coming in, right? And there's another one about uh, this blog post about fire alarm systems because, you, you know, someone pulls a fire alarm, okay, is it, you know, is it a bad sensor? You, know, you should clean the system uh, regularly, uh, avoid activities that would trigger the alarm or like propping the door open and, you know, the, oh, there's a bakery next door that's got too much smoke happening, you know. Or maybe you're just using your smoke alarm as a timer in your house when you're <laughs> cooking, right? Um, I've done that uh, seasoning cast iron at 11 p.m. one time. Uh, my wife uh, was yelling at me. Uh, and I realized that uh, I should have propped the back door open and turned on a fan uh, to prevent that from happening, but it still, uh, it was, I, I barely made it out of there with my, uh, <laughs> don't wake your wife up with a fire alarm, okay? So examples when you don't tune, you know this, install your favorite security engine sensor or your favorite control system, NSM sensor here, install it's collecting, but data, oh my gosh, you got all these emails, all these Zeke alerts coming in, oh my God. Um, I have a little war story. We had um, a customer uh, uh, that uh, we had, they had did this, they went out and bought a, um, you know, a latest vendor, I won't say which vendor, um, and it doesn't matter really. They just install one for their water system, one for their wa wastewater system, and they weren't tuned at all. And they weren't trained on how to tune it. And one had a million alerts in it. The other one had 800,000 alerts in it. The one that had a million alerts in it, you had to reboot the sensor to be able to log into it. So just imagine if your security onion box, Doug, like, you know, it's got a million alerts in there and it's not tuned, it's, it's, useful. it's useless. What would have happened, the root cause was, is they had mesh radios that change IP addresses based upon the best route. And so there was all these alarms of uh, MAC address, IP address changes. Um, if we would have just tuned to learn all the known radio MAC addresses, we wouldn't have gotten any alarms. And, you know, our, our, uh, our good friend Richard Balick tweeted about this. It's like, by default, Bro or Zeke uh, is going to generate alert for everything. So if you, uh, we uh, experienced this, if you've ever put uh, Zeke in a place you've never put it before, and you, by default, it's going to alert on everything. So Modbus or DMP3, it's going to alert on everything. So you've got to turn off everything and, t and then turn on things that you only want it to do. So it's, uh, it's, it's a good thing to get rid of that. And you know, collecting in the mall, everybody remember Beanie Babies? Um, yeah, that was something, right? Back in the early 2000s, right? Um, they're not worth anything if you collect them all. You wanna collect the alerts that matter. You know, the, I wish I still had that Bo knows baseball card, right? Uh, I had all the baseball cards, but the one that Bo knows that had the football pads, and that's the one you wanted, right? As uh, when I was collecting cards as a kid. False positives still cause threat alert fatigue, and like with the target breach, they missed the critical alert because they had too many alerts um, in there. And there's a couple of examples from the news. 
Um, uh, if you haven't seen this before, this is really great. Uh, this is from Google. Uh, uh, and I didn't know that I was going to become Google. So, But this is from uh, a few years ago when I found this web page. Uh, they have the, the confusing matrix of true positive, true negative versus false positive and false negative. Um, example of true positive, a wolf threatened, shepherd said wolf, outcome shepherd is a hero. Um, false negative, uh, a wolf threatened, shepherd said no wolf, outcome the wolf ate all the sheep. And, and then uh, everything there. Um, Mubix on Twitter gave me the idea to find that, so shout out to him for that. So where do we start? Uh, for those of you who have control systems or have customers, clients, friends, whatever, uh, if they're starting to do security monitoring in control systems, where do you start? It's generally there's not any sensors at all, not very logs uh, being collected unless it's for critical things. So basically we want you to start small and use what you already have. You don't need to go buy the latest and greatest everything and redo all of your control systems with the latest Windows, the latest Linux, the latest PLCs. No, start with what you have. And then use that capability until you need more, right? Don't overwhelm yourself right off the bat. And then as you get better, you add more, add more, and add more. I gave a little bit more details about this in my talk at S419. Um, and that video is on YouTube. So focusing on the basics, um, SOC analysts, go buy engineers and your technicians, go buy them a box of donuts and ask them their pain. And they will tell you what has been painful around IT and IT security. And then go solve and conquer because they're smart, they know about monitoring, they just don't know your terms for monitoring. Remember, they don't know DFI or they know root cause analysis, RCA. Um, work on this alert philosophy together and leverage your existing standards like your alarm standards or your SOC philosophy for creating alerts. If, if you don't have one, you can use these standards that I mentioned before. Um, Start, if you need to know where to put a sensor, start at the boundary between your IT and your control system, or OT, IT or OT. Sometimes there's a DMZ firewall, sometimes there's a switch. It could be uh, somewhere, but there's always a delineation between the two, generally. Even if it's a flat network, there's still a delineation there. And then add your existing Windows logs, because a lot of Windows systems are in control systems, and so they have Windows alerts you know, application security logs, all those things. The one piece of advice I have is don't put security alerts on the operator's workstations. They already have enough to do managing their own system, so leave that to the SOC analysts to do that. Don't want to get, unless it's like one, and like if security alert any, tell them to call the SOC team. Maybe that's the only one, but generally try to keep that away from, from what they have to do. All right, now we're going to talk about football and playbooks. And uh, this is a really great picture of uh, Sean Payton, who used to coach the Saints, and you could zoom in and see his playbook here. Um, great thing about football is you have a playbook for everything, right? For third down and two, or fourth and long, or do we punt, or do we pass, or do we run? Right. Um, the the great thing is about the coach is going to use the strengths of his players against the weaknesses of the opponent, and that's what we want to do as defenders. So for IT, we already have tons of playbooks, and y'all got even playbooks in Security Onion, which I love. This is great, but we don't have that many in control system environments. So let's think of four basic playbooks that people should work on for control system environments. One, commodity malware and OT. What do you do when you have config or remnant, keg or tip, any of these regular old Windows things that's been floating around in your network for since 2015? Well, there's generally it's not hurting the control system, but it could. And so you need to have a way to 
find it, hunt for the rest of them that, that could be there, and then claim them safely. Um, I've helped many, many customers do this, and it's a good playbook to have. Um, okay, the second one is OT credential compromise. A lot of times, um, control systems have problems, like you can't change some passwords. They may be hard-coded, or they may have less compli complex uh, abilities, like you can't change it to 20 characters and have all the special characters. Um, maybe they're only limited to eight. So you need to have that knowledge beforehand in case your control system credentials are compromised. Like what happened during the Ukraine power grid attacks in 2015. They stole all the operator passwords and did remote access. There was no a single factor. And what was happening is, is they were turning off power. They would uh, notice it and then kick them out, kill that one operator account, and they were playing whack-a-mole. And they stole the next one, they stole the next one, and they just had all, they had all the accounts. Instead of just severing the network at the VPN or severing the IT and OT network to cancel all that out, they didn't have a playbook to, to what to do for, for when their credentials were compromised. A destructive attack in OT, uh, this has happened, like KillDisk uh, with Ukraine or uh, NotPetya or WannaCry. Um, you need to have a red button sever emergency isolation event uh, for segmenting your OT. Um, and there's lots of different ways to do that, lots of philosophies on how to do that. It's really in, uh, important and obviously back, backups. But uh, and then the last one is ICS protocol attack. We've seen more and more, uh, uh, two this year happened. Um, in Destroyer 2 uh, was a new uh, version of In Destroyer 1 from the Ukraine 2016 attack. Thankfully, the U, uh, Ukraine CERT caught it before it was deployed, but it was targeting their uh, IEC 104 protocol. And then there's another one called In Controller um, that we wrote a report on, and Dragos wrote a report on as well, um, that, that we caught, or someone caught before it was deployed in a victim network, but we saw, we actually ran it in the network with Schneider Electric, one of the vendors uh, uh, that was targeted, uh, their products were targeted in that. So we worked with them and ran it in the lab and it actually worked. Um, so someone, what do you do when someone's fuzzing Modbus or sending unsolicited uh, DMP3 uh, commands or uh, doing function code 90 in Modbus to uh, reboot your PLCs, which is a, a Metasploit module, by the way. What do you do in those cases? So have, have a playbook for all of those uh, four, if you can. And since, uh, I'm gonna, since we're close to Atlanta, uh, I gotta throw in that uh, gift there of uh, uh, Tuttle uh, making the uh, uh, quarterback uh, Matty Ice hit the, hit the, hit the dirt. Um, <laughs> the design plays for each of these phases Practices or drills, user player strengths, exploit their weaknesses, and finish strong. That's my uh, thing here. I think uh, Security Onion should have a mascot uh, because ogres have layers as well. So, um, so know and harden your network, know and tune the network visibility, and know what to do when an incident occurs. Um, Doug, I think this, I, I don't know if you can use this one, it's copyrighted, but, uh, uh, but you should. Okay, well, ogres have layers, cakes have layers. So here, here's a uh, eye chart for all of the references that I talked about. Uh, this will be posted or you can take a picture. And then, uh, so uh, this is ICS, ICS alarm management for all the stuff that engineers have been doing since the dawn of 1880s. Um, ICS uh, security will want to also leverage the security alert management. So got all the stuff from Security Onion in there, NIST 894, um, Zeek, uh, Developers Google, and like uh, Applied Network Security Monitoring from Chris Sanders and Jason Smith, uh, and then the security engineering uh, blog there. So um, I want to appreciate everybody uh, for attending my talk, and I think I'm the last speaker before this a break or the State of the Union or something like that. So 
Do we have any questions? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, th those aren't. It's like they, they don't. There's no logs needed. You either if C squirrel assume it was the cause, and then we would have stories of uh, line crews. If they couldn't find out the cause, they would take a dead squirrel out of the back of the truck and throw it on the ground and <laughs> say, "There's the culprit." Uh, Oh, that was called a uh, ground squirrel or a throwdown squirrel. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, squirrels is the number uh, well number three cause of power outages. Any other any questions? So go home, go back to work, find your control system environments, including your HVAC, your elevators, escalators, all those things. You'll want to put some monitoring on those. And if any, anybody makes a change to the rooftop unit uh, for your uh, AC, you want to know about it, right? So anyway, thanks. <laughs>